Welcome to the shop, my friend Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's build, I'm creating something from the world of Berserk. And I'm doing this with a heavy heart because as I've learned this morning, as I'm putting the final details actually on this build, the Berserk creator, Kentaro Miura, has passed. And for those that are not familiar with him and this world, his work has been an influence on millions of other people that are out there. It's been a huge influence on other industries as far as storytelling, art, the way that this story is created and the arcs that are in it are amazing. If you have not checked out Berserk, I highly recommend it. I'm not going to spoil anything in here because there are parts in this story where you'll be reading and you'll flip a page and your jaw will literally drop. You'll be like, what the hell? So in today's build, I want to do this as kind of a tribute to him. And this is going to be a build of a behelot in Berserk. And what a behelot is, I don't want to spoil the stories, but it's it's kind of like a device that opens up into another dimension. It's very crucial to the story, and you become very entwined with it, and you realize how scary this damn thing actually is. So I want to show you what I did to put this behelot together. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm still pretty new to digital sculpting and ZBrush in general, but I'm getting a lot better about utilizing my primitives and using my Wacom Cintiq to manipulate them to get the shapes that I need. With this sculpture, I based a lot of the attributes off of the manga, and I'm honestly really happy with how it turned out. When the model was complete, I exported it from ZBrush into Cheetu Box. Here I was able to rotate the model and add the supports needed for printing. And since I have enough room on the build plate, I go ahead and add a second model. I transfer the file by USB to my Anycubic Photon S. I started by printing the standard behelots, and these came out great. I go ahead and put them in my Anycubic wash and cure station, and while that's working, I can go ahead and start printing the open mouth version. Just like the standard version, these open mouth versions came out fantastic as well, and so it's time for a dunk in the alcohol, and then a little bit of UV curing. With the supports, I actually broke most of them before I did this curing process, and then broke off the base and then cured it again. After the behelots had been cured, you can see the little nubs that are left on the bottom from the supports. I'm going to smooth out the bottom and remove those by wet sanding using some 300 grit sandpaper. I take my sandpaper and I wet it, and then I wrap it around a tongue depressor to give me a hard surface against the egg. This will help me control how much pressure is placed upon it and refine it a lot easier. After the initial sanding, I'm going to coat these with some Krylon Red Oxide Primer. This spray paint does coat the surface, but it also gives me an additional layer to help wet sand at a higher grit. Now I'm going to step up to some 1200 grit sandpaper, and what the spray paint layer has done is giving me a really smooth surface, and even though the print was pretty smooth itself, this will help me get rid of all the different little nubs and the print lines. And even though that surface is completely smooth, here you can see the difference between the primer layer and the resin. After the sanding is complete, I go ahead and spray on a second coat and leave these to dry. The models have come out very smooth and I'm really happy with the level of detail I was able to achieve on these. After the behelots have been allowed to cure, it's time to make the two-part mold and to start, I'm gonna need my Legos. Legos are a super quick and easy way to build a mold box exactly the size you need. 
Once I have a couple layers of bricks down, I then put in some plasticine, which is a soft clay. This clay is easy to work with, so it works great as one part of our mold box. Now up in the ring area, I go ahead and I insert some monster clay, and that's because I can drill this part out after it's cured. But this section will give me enough room because I'm going to be pouring the resin in from the top. Once the models are good to go, they are firmly pressed down into the clay. Then I take some small strips of clay and build them up on the sides of the model. This is where the two halves of the mold are going to meet, and you're going to have a mold line, so you don't want this on a detailed area. I then take a ball tool and press it into the clay. This will give me registrations where the two mold halves will come together. Without the registration keys, the mold walls could shift and it would give us an improper cast. I like to use perler beads to figure out the volume of silicone I'm going to need for this job. The beads are poured into each mold and then divided into the two cups because I'm using a one to one mix ratio. I mark the line and label both cups. Now I want to do all this as a single pour, so I added the beads from the other mold as well. Because these are resin prints, I need to use a 10 cure silicone, so for this demonstration I'm going to be using some Umu 25. If you were to use a platinum cure silicone, you could have some inhibition issues where it would not cure properly. Now Umu is a 1 to 1 mix ratio, so it makes it nice and easy. After parts A and B have been combined, I then use a stir stick to make sure that both components have been integrated. This is crucial because if it's not thoroughly mixed, it won't set up, so make sure to scrape the bottom and the sides. I spray in some mold release, and then from a high point start dripping the silicone into the corner of the mold. By allowing the silicone to move over the surface on its own, it makes for a better print layer. After a couple hours, I come back to the shop and the silicone is set up, so now it's time to start to make the other half. The Legos in the clay can now be removed and you can see the first half of our mold. I put the molds back down on the sheet and then start to build my Lego walls once again. This is also the time to remove any additional plasticine clay that may have been stuck to the sides or the back of the models. The Legos are going to need to be built up high enough to accommodate for the second layer of silicone. Just like before, I use my perler beads to figure out the volume of silicone I need for the second half. For this process, a lot of people use different things. Some people use rice, some people use water. I just felt that the perler beads work great because they don't have an additional film on them and I don't have to wait for anything to dry. Now because silicone will stick to itself, I'm putting down a layer of wax. This is generously applied onto the silicone with a brush and this will allow the two halves to come apart easily. More Umu 25 is used for this second half and just like before, I'm making sure to thoroughly mix both components. I'm pouring the silicone from a high point and a small stream to minimize the amount of air bubbles in the mold. After a couple hours, this side of the silicone is also set up and can be removed from the box. When you're pulling your two halves apart, be careful because if you didn't get wax everywhere you needed to, parts of this could stick together. But it looks like I did a pretty decent job and both these halves came apart pretty easy. And the print in the mold came out perfect. For number two, it's the exact same process and it looks like both of these molds are good to go. To help the resin get to every little detail on the inside of the molds, I brush them with baby powder. After the powder has been brushed in, I blow out any excess with a compressor. The molds fit together great, but the silicone here is a little squishy, so I add some masonite to either side to distribute the weight properly. Rubber bands are wrapped all around the outside and we are ready to pour some resin. Now normally I'd use Smoothcast 300 or 325 because they flow a little bit better, but all I have is some 65D on hand, so that'll have to do. Just like the Umu, the 65D is a 1 to 1 mix ratio, and so that's just mixed thoroughly and then poured slowly into the mold. Now because these molds are pretty small, it's possible to trap air bubbles in a lot of the little details, so I'm going to put the mold into a pressure pot. The pressure pot shrinks those air bubbles down, so hopefully they come out as clean casts.
It's always a little nerve wracking when you open a mold for the very first time because you never know exactly what you're going to get. But in this instance, these came out great with very minimal cleanup. A very slight mold line on either side, but the face looks awesome. Also thing to note, I have a small piece of masonite in the bottom of my pressure pot because the bottom is not flat. For the other model, it's the same process. I put masonite on either side of the box and wrap that with rubber bands. Then I slowly pour in my resin and once full, I place that in the pressure pot. After about 10 minutes, the pot can be opened. I take out the mold and I see what I have. Looks like this one also came out great. So let's go ahead and clean these up and start to paint. The resin casts after being cleaned up were sprayed with some Krylon Red Oxide Primer. They were then left to dry and cure and then I could begin the hand painting process. To paint the face I'm going to be using primarily Vallejo brand paints. To start off I'm going to use the color Dead Flesh for the eyes and teeth. This color is carefully painted on with a detail brush. Now Vallejo paints are designed for miniatures and they cover really well and they have a very high pigment count. Now if you notice the eyes and the teeth here don't have to be perfect because I'm going to be adding washes later on that will flow down into the details. I add bone white to the previous color and use that as my highlight layer. With the main colors in place, I add a black wash to the entire piece. After the wash is pretty much dry, I go back with that original color and re-highlight the eyes and the teeth. Ultramarine blue is added to the mixture and this will give me a subdued color for the iris. I use my highlight color once again to paint the inside of the iris and then I go ahead and add the pupil. Gory red is mixed in with some black and this color is going to be used for his blood tears. A small highlight is added to the top of the pupils just to give the eyes a little bit of life. Using a very fine detail brush, I paint some extremely small lines on either side of the eye to act as veins. At this point, the whole egg can now be sealed with a matte spray. Gloss varnish is added to the eyes, the blood, and the mouth, and this does a great job against that matte finish. Golden brand iridescent bronze is added to the clasp at the top of the egg and some more black wash is added into the recesses. Moving on to the other egg, an entire black wash is painted on the surface. Most of this is then wiped away with a damp paper towel. Then selectively I add a little bit of wash to the mouth, eyes, and nose. The iridescent bronze is painted onto this clasp as well. I picked up a roll of brown suede and this is going to work great as the necklace. I'm 
I'm extremely happy with how these came out and I hope that it's a fitting tribute to the series. Now I will have a few of these available for sale and they're gonna be available over on my Etsy shop. I'll have a link in the description section. So that way you can have a piece of history for your Berserk collection or open a portal to the God Hand. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together my own Behelet, or the Egg of the King. And hopefully this inspires you to check out the world of Berserk. And I really do feel that I need to make a few more things from this just because it would be an awesome tribute to what this has done for everybody in the art industry. Now, hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos. If you are, give them a thumbs up, share them with your friends and family. And until next time, thanks for stopping by.